Welcome back. I'm excited to get to some more band made today. We're almost done with the album New Beginning. And the reason I want to get done is because I got the next album, which is Brand New Made. I'm pretty sure there's some songs I'm going to enjoy on there, but first I want to finish uh, New Beginning, which is their second album. In case you haven't been following along, what I did was I started at the beginning on Bandmate's very first album. And I listened to all those songs. Then we did the single that came after that, and then we've started on this second album. And I've only got two songs left on this one, and one of them has a music video, but we are going to start with the audio first. These are tracks eight and nine. Now, to get the audio, I didn't find an audio-only version of Don't Let Me Down on YouTube, so I am going to switch over here to Spotify. I do have the lyrics. Sorry, I folded out this lyric sheet. It's, it's, uh, it's really big. And the print isn't actually incredibly tiny on this one, but uh, this is one of the few songs uh, of Bandmaids that is entirely in English. It still helps to have the lyric sheet, though, because even with American rock bands, British Canadian rock bands, I sometimes have trouble understanding what they're saying. But anyway, I read the lyrics. I'm pretty sure that a lot has been made about the subject matter of this song, that it's sexual in nature. But I'm not sure why we as Americans especially have such a huge hang-up with sex. It is, after all, how each of us came into being, and it's a fairly normal, regular part of life. But we do know that it's been prohibited in the past. Some of us are old enough to remember when bands had to go in front of Congress and testify about the subject matter of their songs. And I, for one, I'm glad that we're not living in that time anymore. Although some of the people that wanted that then are still alive and still in power now. And some of the people that voted for them back then are still voting for them now. I know people personally that would like subject matter like this to not be available in any kind of art, books, music, movies. But I'm glad that we don't live in a time where it is restricted and that bands and artists can sing about whatever they want. I am here mostly for the audio, for the music, for the sound. But I also like subject matter of songs. I like this, you know, when songs have a message, I like it to be interesting. And, and this one is more interesting than some of the others be, because it's different. All right, I've got my microphone, I mean, my headphones tangled up around my chair somehow. All right, let's see what this sounds like. All right, well, I took a break from the video for a second, and I did find where there's a graphic equalizer of sorts here on Spotify. It's under my profile on settings, and I selected one called Rock. Hopefully that sounds better. All right, we've switched back over to New Beginning, and we're going to start this song again. Sounds like it starts off with just a guitar riff and then the regular cymbal crash in the background. I will just say I do like that riff in the background. That sounds almost like a metal riff. That's a pretty, pretty heavily distorted guitar, and I like that sound. I've liked that sound ever since I first heard my first distorted guitar, and and that just sounds like good hard rock. I liked the scream. I, I think it was Miku that opens with the scream, but I don't know. Maybe we'll see in the video. I still don't feel like I got the mix right here, uh, even though I played with the, the graphic equalizer. Hopefully it sounds fine on your end. I'm still not hearing the bass guitar, but again, that might be due to the, the way that this mix is coming through to me. And I also know that what I'm hearing isn't exactly what you're hearing because of the recording software. It's, it's more complicated than you might think to set this up. But I am hearing the guitar, the lead guitar, doing really interesting things right behind the vocals. And that's pretty nice sounding. Is this the first or only band-made song that has a male vocalist? I know it's not singing, but the whoever was shouting, hey, I'm pretty sure that was a guy or a 
group of men, probably some of you maniacs who have your head filled with band made trivia will, uh, will tell me if, uh, if there are other songs that have male vocalists. Also, it does, it does sound like, uh, Miku is getting some of the vocals here. That's not entirely psyche backing up just a little bit. That's Miku, right? Just like uh, that part in Beauty and the Beast, there is some really heavy music going on here underneath the vocals and in here between the vocals. I really like the contrast. Not only is Bandmaid's image around the contrast of, you know, cute women and maid outfits contrasted with the heavy, hard music, but even in each song, there's contrast between the higher, airy vocals, the, in some cases, cute vocals, not always, but even when they're serious, it's a softer touch than the male-dominated rock and roll that most of us grew up with. But then the music is heavy, and I like that contrast. Sorry, let me stop real quick. I did hear the bass guitar there because everything else was dropped out. It was just a couple of notes, really light and feathery, just way up there. I think that's the bass. was looking in the lyrics because when whoever it was that was talking very softly behind the music i couldn't hear what they were saying i was looking to see if that was in the lyric sheet i don't think that it is but yeah that was a fun song just the audio we don't have to have the music video for everything it's it's fun it's bouncy it's fast i like it there's variety in it if i'm not mistaken there was not a guitar solo i think i would have noticed that so let's check out the official music video all right and hopefully the sound will be better for me here i'm definitely noticing a, a different sound than I have heard in, in my previous band made adventures. Let's go. Before it starts, I did like the uh, the paper screens there with the silhouettes on the back of them. It reminded me, I might not have mentioned this before, but I used to live in Japan. It was a long time ago. It was before Bandmaid and any of any of the members of Bandmaid were born. In fact, I, I'm guessing that when I lived there, their parents were children. But in the house that we lived in, it had those paper screens uh, dividing a couple of the rooms. I don't remember exactly where because I was a child at the time. But uh, the windows in my room had the, the paper screens there and uh, had to be very careful, you know, not to, to tear them up. But that's what that looked like, uh, that their silhouettes were, were lit up on. Uh, like here, for example... I also like that once you're familiar enough with Bandmaid, you can just see one silhouette and you know which member of the band that it is. It does sound a little bit better to me here, but I'm still not hearing the bass guitar during this opening section. Uh, yeah, this this right here is very similar to the paper, 
I don't know, there's a name for them that I don't remember, but those very thin wooden frame with paper pressed between them to let light in, but it's com- you know completely opaque, so you can't see through it at all. That the, there's probably only a limited number of countries in the world where where you see things like that. So that's kind of a you know designating that that's where you are. And right here is when we see our little pigeon fly from the room, frame by frame. She's on her way out. That looks heavily CGI'd right there, doesn't it? Also, the light that's on her is definitely not the same light that's hitting this wall. So yeah, the, these are two images that were put together, two videos that were put together. All right, let's keep going. just want to point out that I have noticed this. I, I've seen this video before, but the, those shoes that she's running in don't look comfortable at all. And I mentioned it to my wife and she, she said, actually, these aren't that uncomfortable compared to many other shoes that she's worn. She wouldn't go running in them, but they're not as bad as, as many women's shoes. I wanted to look at this image a little more closely here. The the architectural styles there, the the garden area, the bridge, the paper lanterns, and and so forth. It also looks like this is on a piece of paper, right? It's is that what it's supposed to look like? Like it was a folded out piece of paper, or maybe it is. Maybe it's maybe it was a folded out piece of paper that they videoed and then and placed them on there. Because there's it looks like there's a fold line right through here, and it looks like the light is reflecting off of this off the paper and then underneath there there's looks almost like a, the stage that they've placed this paper on that's that's really interesting i have no idea how they made this video but but it's really interestingly put together here i also just noticed it looks like uh, konami is yelling here along with the with the song or or maybe just express expressing her joy at at getting to be a part of this oh no she maybe she just has her mouth open all right No, she was singing there. All right, I'm going to do frame by frame because I'm pretty sure she was singing. It went by so fast in the video, but here we go. Frame by frame. Yeah, oh yeah, that was that was the L there. Don't let me. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think she's singing along in parts. I, I like that. Even even if you're not mic'd, even if your voice isn't on this track, the fact that you're singing along, you, maybe that helps you keep time or maybe it just means you enjoy it. I don't know if any of you know, but is this the same intersection that was in that show? Uh, Alice in Borderlands, that the, the famous intersection, maybe not here, but maybe in one of the other scenes, one of them looked familiar. It reminded me uh, of that show. That was Anyway, I, I was just curious about that. I like how the light changed there. It kind of closed in, and that might have been an, an effect added afterward, but it was more yellow and bright, yellow and white light, and then it closed in with the bluish filter around the edges, maybe to make it look more like nighttime? I don't know.
I'm going to back up just a little bit uh, for the video purposes. There were a couple of scenes where I thought, you know, I mean, I didn't think. I know I saw English words and I just wanted to, to look at that again. Okay, right here in this scene, for instance, in which this scene, it does look like she's being lit with the same light as the scene behind her. So I assume she's actually running down this street. And it makes you wonder what you know people must have thought that were in the area. Looks like maybe in an employee of the store standing out front who appears to be watching her and, of course, can see the camera person going along with her as she's running. But yeah, I noticed there was uh, there were some English words here like free Wi-Fi, discount computers, since 1946, and a bunch of kanji that I don't recognize. I haven't learned maybe but five or ten kanji so far. Also, as I was going through frame by frame, I noticed it looks like Misa's holding a pick in her mouth during this little section. If you back up just a little bit, I first noticed it just as she moved her head into the light right about here going forward now. At first, I thought that's a weird glare to be on the teeth, but no, then I think it's the pick. I think she's holding the pick in her mouth there. It didn't come into the light enough to show for sure, but that's interesting. Wow, you learn all sorts of things when you go through frame by frame that you didn't notice before. And I've just figured out the keyboard shortcut for that not too long ago. But yeah, I see there's a, a cross on uh, Akane's necklace there. Not that I care what any of the band members' personal beliefs are. It's just, you know, I've been I've heard so often that in, you know, that Japan is a fairly non-religious country. Uh, spiritual beliefs notwithstanding, you know, that they don't often participate in organized religion, whereas the, the cross tends to indicate an organized religion. So I found that interesting. And the other English word I saw there was the police uh, sticker on Mises' bass guitar. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and finish that out one more time just because I got distracted by some of these things. But yeah, this is a really fun song. All right. Uh, once again, just like uh, earlier on this album with Real Existence, I noticed Konami really getting into it. Even, you know, this, she doesn't have a solo in this song, just just the parts that she's playing behind the vocals. And again, maybe not really playing during the filming of the video, but she looks like she's having fun. When I, when I started paying a little bit more attention, she was singing along with m almost the entire chorus and possibly some of the verses, just having a really good time. Akane looked like she was doing that bouncing in the chair thing that she was doing in real existence. And if you were considering buying the physical album, the, the one that I came with actually came with a DVD. I might have mentioned this before, and it has the two music videos, Real Existence and Don't Let Me Down on the DVD that came with the album. Now, I've been told that there's a live version of this somewhere that's not a fan cam that was actually shot professionally, so I'm going to look for it really quick. Okay, I did find a version that looks like it's pretty high quality from, it says it's from the online Akuji in 2021, which I, that's the one that I think we have seen some of the official live videos from. This is the one without a physical present audience that was streamed online, if I'm not mistaken. I, was, I, I wasn't watching or listening to Bandmate at the time, so I don't know. All right, well, let's see what they did with it live without an audience. Okay, immediately I noticed an improvement in sound quality. Now that could very well be because that earlier video was recorded in, I assume, 2015, and this is six years later after they've been touring and making other albums for six years. And that, that tells us a couple of things. Not only have they improved, but it also tells us that whoever went to, you know, to record this, their production team, sound engineers, whatnot, really know what they're doing. You, don't, you just don't hear a lot of live, even professionally recorded live versions that sound that good. At least I don't. I want to hear that opening again just because it sounded so much clearer to me than the studio track. I, 
I also noticed that the opening scream, which I think was Miku, but I'm not sure, was missing here, which is fine. It, it was on the album. Maybe they you know, didn't want to do that anymore. Maybe she didn't want to scratch out her throat before the rest of the show. But yeah, I can hear the bass guitar in this version, even if I couldn't hear it very well in those others. I also noticed that her English pronunciation here is a, it seems to me a little less practiced than it did on the album. I assume that before recording a track like that in a language that's not your own, a language that you don't speak every day, you practice it very carefully, maybe even have a coach there. So maybe I assume I'm, you know, just kind of guessing here that in 2015, they worked on that quite a bit so that when those words came out in English, you could hear most of them. I still relied on the lyrics sheet for some of them, but here, some of them are not as Englishy as they were on the studio track. The guitar sounds a lot heavier here, a lot less uh, flashy and punky than than it tried to sound in the other song. Even though I mentioned during the stu- during the music video that it sounded heavy and hard in contrast to the vocals, it sounds harder and heavier here. Uh, that just got my attention. I had to pause there for a second. There was a an interesting moment here where Konami came up to Psyche. I'm backing up, going backward, frame by frame here. Oh, the light passed over her there for just a second. Okay. That's the kind of thing that you can see in a live version that, that won't happen in a staged performance for a music video because here a lot of times, you know, it's, I, I assume that their movements aren't really staged. Some of them, many of them uh, are spontaneous. So that makes it fun. <laughs> Konami was singing on the mic there, wasn't she? I don't know if I backed up to the right spot here, but yeah, if we advance frame by frame, Konami's singing into the microphone, I think. Whoops, she went out of frame. Okay, here it is. There's always a microphone there in front of Konami's station that she doesn't always stay at, and there's always a microphone in front of Misa's station. I I don't think I've ever seen Misa use hers, but but maybe she has. I, I haven't seen everything yet. And I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen Konami use hers, but she's using it now. I don't know if it's turned on, I don't know if it's turned up, and I don't know how loud she's singing, but I'm pretty sure she's singing here as we go frame by frame. Yeah, she is adding a vocal to the chorus here. Definitely. Okay, I went too far, but yes. Yeah, okay, so K- Konami is uh, is one of the vocalists on this song. All right, I learned something. There it was, the, the part that I thought I was looking for, but I couldn't find. Okay, yeah, it's definitely more clear here with... <laughs> where the camera is zoomed in right on her that she is singing into the microphone although there's a you know what a three or four inch gap there depending on camera angle so it might not be picking her up very well and of course she's singing with psyche who has a really powerful voice but yeah okay good job konami helping out with the vocals
Oh, apparently I was wrong. That speaking part is in the lyrics. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my time. I just want to say, I gotta say, I gotta say, scream. I didn't catch that in either the official audio or the official music video, but just now when she said it, it matched up with the lyrics on the lyric sheet. And also the bass part that I talked about earlier, I liked that the camera focused on it here, so I backed up just a little bit. Hopefully we'll catch that really high-pitched bass note. Right there. Okay, it was Psyche saying the scream part, but yeah, that part was in the lyrics. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste my time. I gotta say, I gotta say, and then she says scream. Okay, well now I know what they said. One more time. I definitely heard the bass there. Yeah, Konami and Miku were both singing. I'll try not to. Yeah, that was fun. And and as much fun as the official music video was with the the running through the town, I, I liked this. I liked the audio from this live version so much better. And hopefully it came across for you that way as well. I just remembered that I was also going to do Shake That. So let's finish this album and do Shake That. Okay, there is official audio on YouTube for Shake That. And here we are. Let's go. Yeah, I don't know why, but the audio here is so much better than the audio on Spotify. Or maybe it was just that one song. I listen to Spotify a lot. I listen to it while I'm mowing with my earbuds in. I listen to Spotify while I'm riding my bike, sometimes while I'm driving. And uh, it sounds good, but for some reason here on the PC, it doesn't sound that good. This audio just sounds better, and I'm going to back up. felt like I had to pause it just in case I had something to say, but I, I don't have anything to say. I, I just like the song. It's it's sounding really good. There was there were a couple of parts where I don't know if it was something with my connection or it was actually in the audio. There were there was a place where it sounded like there was a glitch, and then there was another place where some of the mix came through a little too loud. And I think it was the backup vocals came in in one ear or the other that was a little louder than the rest of the mix. But other than that, uh, I'm really enjoying the song. It, it's just a good song. Uh, on the lyrics sheet here, there's not a lot of it that's in English uh, other than shake that. There are a couple of lines in English like, what a fool, don't care, it's time to change, and heaven. Heaven's nice, right? Uh, oh, naked. Uh, that, that's what it says in English here. Okay. Shake that, shake that, then something in Japanese, and then naked. Rock this way, ride on the wave, 
Border, Who Am I, Nervous, Nothing to Help, Revolution, I'm just skipping through the Japanese parts and reading only the English parts, um, Burn Into the Ground, Get Up on Your Feet, If You Never Die, You Can Speak Out in the World Out There, Show Me You're Real, Cause It Ain't a Game. Okay, so there was a little English in here. Looks like most of it's later in the song. Yeah, it's it's got a nice steady groove to it. Let's go. Again, the music sounds heavy here, and I like that. And, and again, there's a contrast between the heaviness of the music and the and the more ethereal, angel-like quality of the vocals. Also, there were a couple of parts during, I think, during the chorus, right in between vocal lines, the guitar made a couple of sounds there that reminded me strongly of some older song I've listened to. I'm sure it was an American rock band. I, I, I can't think of which one it is right now, but it, it definitely had that sound to it. So throwing a little bit of nostalgia in there never hurt if you're trying to, uh, you know, to get me in the audience. Right there when she said nothing can help or something like that that part sounded like it was louder than the rest of the mix back i'm gonna back up five seconds yeah the lyric sheet says that the words were no nothing can help was it did it seem louder than the rest of the song to you it, it did to me it was i don't know it took me out for just a second And right there was the guitar part that I was talking about that reminded me of something I want to say from the late 80s or very early 90s. Again, five seconds. There was kind of a nat nat right in, right in between words. It was a really nice guitar solo, and I just love that Bandmade so often gives the the bass guitar just a, a couple of measures. That's all. That's all it needs to set this apart from so many other rock bands that never gave the bass player a, chi- a time to shine. Now, sometimes during a show, the bass player might have had a you know a two minute free for all for all I know, but in a song. And this is the studio version of the song, and they said, we're, we're going to have this section right here where the drums are going to do a really cool pattern, and then the bass gets to play on top of that. And that's just awesome. that They, they don't just do it once here and once on a different album. They, they do it every other song, seems like. Uh, like, when the band started, if, if I've got the history right in my head, Misa and Konami were the two that had, like, chops, Right. Akane was was steady and okay and reliable on the drums, as far as I know, but I but Misa had already been playing in a band. Konami was already doing what she was doing on YouTube before they found her. The 
that was some pretty serious playing around. I think playing around is what I said a minute ago about Akane's drumming through there. Whatever she was doing, it really felt like she and Misa had practiced that together or or seriously discussed it a lot before it went to the recording phase because the two playing around were you know in a similar supporting pattern and it just meshed really well. I want to hear that part again even if I miss a little bit of the guitar solo this time. Very nice. It also seems like one that they've probably played at a lot of live shows since then, just because it's it's got a chorus that English speaking audiences can sing along with or any non Japanese speaking audience can, you know, sing along with a couple of English words, shake that, shake that. And the rest of it is just, you know, hard driving. Uh, and it's a good rock song. Uh, there were parts there near the end. I realized it, I think is it rat that some of that guitar work is reminding me of? I don't, I don't know if Rat's still around. It's, I might be wrong about Rat. I, I'm pretty sure I haven't listened to them in a long time, but that's the, that's the name that popped into my head when I was listening to some of those pretty heavy guitar riffs. I think that was a good song to end the album with. And honestly, despite, I think most people probably uh, focusing mostly on the mu- music videos because that's the time in which we live, I think this is a better song than Don't Let Me Down, musically. Maybe not lyrically. Maybe the other one's better lyrically because it, you know, has that catching your attention, emotional appeal sort of thing. Whereas this one doesn't. But just as a song, as a song you're going to listen to, I don't know. It's again, why compare them? That's a great song to end the album with. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to starting the next one, which is uh, brand new made. Now this one has at least a couple of songs that I have heard before, like the Nonfiction Days, which has a music video that goes with it. It didn't come with the album though. This is the first album I got from them that came in a plastic case, so it'll fit with all my, you know, other CDs, but it doesn't have the DVD included with the music videos. But anyway, Nonfiction Days is on there. Track six is Freedom, which has a music video. Oh, and Before Yesterday and Alone. So I think I think there's four music videos off of this album, off of just eight tracks. That's maybe not even a full album, right? If there's only eight tracks. But yeah, half of them have music videos. The other ones will be uh, Look At Me, Order... Brand New Road, Yuragu, okay. Oh, okay, and a bonus track, Real Existence. I just now saw that. That's really tiny. Okay, apparently they have a live version of Real Existence on the album as well. And I will get to that as soon as I have time to to sit down and do this for that album. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And a bunch of you already have, and I really appreciate that. I've just been overwhelmed by how many people have said that they enjoyed listening to these along with me. I saw that somebody had posted on in a Facebook group recommending my channel, and I was I was really flattered by that. Thank you. Uh, that that person had suggested that you subscribe here. I, I I don't need you to. I'm not trying to get monetized, but if you want to, that's fine. If that'll help you to you know to see my next video when it comes out. And I I don't have a Patreon or anything like that. Uh, you know, no merchandising or products or anything. So if you want if you actually want to help me and support me on YouTube, I have another channel called Random Chess Person where I'm trying to get better at chess and documenting that process, and and I don't always do very well at it. But that channel is monetized, and I figure the more subscribers and views that one gets, you know, that'll actually help me. But thank you for coming here, and I'll see you next time.